Geometry, final review, question number 53. The Sears Tower in Chicago is 1,450 feet high. A model of the tower is 24 inches tall. What is the ratio of the height of the model to the height of the tower? So the first thing we've got to realize is asking the ratio from the model to the tower. So we'll set up like that. Okay, the next thing we've got to realize is they're not in the same units of measure. To have a ratio, they have to be in the same units of measure. Well, the model is 24 inches. And we can convert that to feet. You know, one foot is 12 inches. So when we do that, the model is two feet. The tower itself is 1450 feet. So now we've got it in the same unit of measure. So it's going to be two to 1450. Okay, now we can divide both sides by two and we're going to get one to 725. So our answer is A. 54. Solve the proportion. 6 over A is equal to 18 over 27. So we can cross multiply and we can get 18A equals 6 times 27. Divide each side by 18. So A is going to equal 6 times 27, I'm writing it the exact same way, over 18. Well, we can simplify this. I don't have my calculator with me, so 3 goes, or 6 goes into 18 3 times. And then 3 goes into 27 9 times. So A is equal to 9. Answer C. 55. All right. 5 over 7 is equal to M over 35. Well, here's a shortcut if you want to use it. You don't have to. But remember, you can simplify ratios horizontally or vertically. Well, how many times is 7 going to 35? 5 times. So we can cross multiply. So we're going to get M equals 25. Answer is D. And again, if you don't see that, you can do it this way. 7m equals 5 times 35. Divide everything by 7. So 7 or m equals 5 times 35 over 7. And then you can see it's still going to be 25. 56. You want to produce a scale drawing of your living room, which is 24 by 15 feet. You're using a scale of 4, inch, e, four inches equals 6 feet. What will be the dimensions of your scale drawing? Well, we have a 24 feet by 15 feet drawing. What is our scale? 4 inches to 6 feet. So we can multiply each set one by the ratio. 4 inches is to 6 feet. 4 inches is to 6 feet. Okay. Now that we multiply by the ratios, we can cancel. So when you do the math, 6 feet goes into 24 feet 4 times. So it's going to be 16 inches by... Okay. This one's not going to be as easy. We can cancel this. 3 goes into 6 2 times. 3 feet goes into that 5 times. Okay, 2 goes into 4 twice. So 5 times 2 is 10. So our final answer is 16 inches by 10 inches. Answer is B. So we just use ratios. 57. The polygons are similar but not necessarily drawn to scale. So we know AB is similar to DE and BC is similar to EF. So you could write this ratio like this. You could say the long side is to the short side as the long side is to the short side. Now we can cross multiply. So we can get now 5x squared 
equals 20. Divide each side by 5, so we get x squared equals 4. Square root each side, so x equals 2. Okay, it didn't ask us for x. It said find the length of AB and EF. Okay, now since we know x is 2, AB is just going to be 5 times 2, which is 10. And EF is 2. So AB is 10, EF is 2. So our answer is B. 58. Are the triangles similar? Well, what do we know about the sum of the three angles of a triangle? It has to be equal to 180, right? So this angle right here would be 180 minus 48.6 minus 30.4. When you put all that in, you get 65. So you know this angle is 65 degrees. So what do I know? All my angles are congruent. So yes, I know they're going to be similar by the angle-angle postulate. 59. State whether the triangles are similar. If so, write the similarity statement and or the posture you used. Okay, well, AB is 5 and BC is 5. ON is 7.5, MN is 7.5. So we could say AB must be similar to MN if they exist. So AB is 5, MN is 7.5. BC is going to be similar to MO, 5 to 7.5. And then the bases, CA, OM. CA is 8, and OM is 12. Let's see if our ratios hold up. 5 over 7.5 can reduce to 2 thirds. 5 over 7.5 reduces to 2 thirds. 8 over 12, we could factor out a 4, so that would be 2 thirds. So, yes, they are similar. And we proved it by side, side, side. We didn't have any angles given to us. So the answer is A. 60. Explain why the triangles are similar. Well, we have this angle is congruent to this angle. We know this angle is congruent to this angle. So we know it's by the angle-angle postulate. So we can say, to find the value of x, 8 is to 12 as x is to 7. So multiply each side by 7. So x is going to equal 56 over 12. Okay. 12 times 4 is 48. So that's going to be 4 and 8 twelfths which is going to simplify to 4 and 2 thirds. So angle, angle, postulate, and 4 and 2 thirds. Answer is D. 61. OK, we know we got similar triangles by angle, angle. So the small base, the, the base of the small triangle is 8. The side length of the small triangle is 6, so we can say 6 is to 8 as, what's the, what's the base of the big triangle? X. Okay, what's the length of the big triangle? 4 plus 6, so 10. So we can cross multiply. So we're going to get 6X equals 80. Okay, divide each side by 6. So X is going to be 13 and one third. So we're able to prove it by angle, angle again. 13 and a third, so 61 is B. 62, use the information in the diagram to determine the height of the tree. Okay, well we got similar triangles. And one thing we notice is the tree is exactly halfway between the beginning and the building. See how at the bottom we got 120, 120, 144, 144. 
So if the building's height was 160 and the tree is exactly half the way through, what do you think the tree is going to be? Half of 160? Absolutely, it's going to be 80. The answer is A. But you could do a ratio if you wanted to. The big base of the big triangle is 240. The height of the big triangle is 160. So we can set that equal to the base of the small triangle is 120. And the height of the tree is X. We said we could, we could simplify. So 120 goes into 240 twice. Then 2 goes into 160 80 times. So either way we get X equals 80. The height of the tree is 80. 63. Find the geometric mean of the pair of numbers. Well, the geometric mean is nothing more than the square root of the product. Okay? So we'll get our handy dandy calculator out for this one. So we'll do the square root of 175 times 7. And we get 35. Easy calculator work. Answer C. 64. Find the length of the altitude drawn to the hypotenuse. Okay, there's a couple ways we could do this. You could remember the altitude is nothing more than the geometric mean of the two numbers. Or we can set up the ratio. Look at the middle size triangle. I'm going to highlight it in yellow for you. All right, the base is x, or the short side is x, and the long side is 26. Now can we set a ratio for this small triangle? We sure can. Okay, its short side is 5 and its base is x. So we could say x squared equals 26 times 5. So x equals the square root of 26 times 5. So 26 times 5 is 130. So x equals the square root of 130. And that breaks down to 10 times 13, 2 times 5 times 13. So that is simplified as it can be. So the answer is D. 65. Use the side splitter theorem to find x, given that PQ is parallel to BC. Easy ratios here now. 8 is to x as 12 is to 18. Now we can simplify. 4 goes into 8 twice. 4 goes into 12 three times. 3 goes into 18 six. So x is going to equal 12. The answer is A. 66. Solve for x. Again, just a nice little ratio. So I can say 24 is to x as 36 is to 12. Well, 12 goes into 36 three times. 3 goes into 24 8 times. So when you cross multiply, you get x is equal to 8. Answer is A. 67. Okay. Let's look at the big triangle. Base the hypotenuse. So we're going to go short side hypotenuse. So it's x is to 9. Okay, let's look at the small triangle. Short side to hypotenuse. Short side was 4, the hypotenuse was x. So we're going to cross multiply. x squared equals 36, so x equals 6. Our answer is b. 68. Find x to the nearest tenth. Okay, so we know we have a ratio. 
So we can say 8.3 is to x as 6.7 is to 11.6. That's easy calculator work for us. So we're going to cross multiply 8.3 times 11.6. So we're going to get 6.7x equals 96.28. So we're going to divide that 96.28 by 6.7. And we're going to get 14.437. So x equals 14.4. We're actually 37. We're going to round up to b. 69. The figures are similar. Given the rate, give the ratio of the perimeters and the ratio of the areas of the first figure to the second. So the perimeters are just a ratio of the side lengths. So we got a ratio of 14 to 15. Well, that simplifies. Eight, sorry, five goes into 48 times. Five goes into 15 three times. So this is my perimeter ratio, eight to three. To find the area ratio, you just square each number. So it's just going to be eight squared, 64, over three squared, which is nine. So the perimeter is eight to three. And the area is 64 to 9. Answer must be D. All right, number 70. The figures are similar. The area of one figure is given. Find the area of the other. So we need to get the perimeter ratio. Okay, the perimeter of the larger one is 40. The perimeter of the smaller one is 35. So 5 goes into 48. And 5 goes into 7 or 5 goes into 35 7 times. So now to find the area, we're just going to square them. The ratio of the area is just going to be 64 to 49. Okay, we just squared those. That makes sense. Now, we know the area of the big one. The area of the big one is 1589. So what we don't know is the area of the small one. So now we're just going to set those ratios equal to each other. I'm going to cross multiply, so I'm going to get 64x equals 49 times 1589. So get our handy dandy calculator out. 49 times 1589 divided by 64. 1216x equals 1216 and some change. The answer is A. Okay, last one for this uh, part, number 71. Area of the smaller trapezoid is 558, so we need to find the area of the larger one. So our, our ratios are 24 is to 57. Okay, 3 goes into 24 eight times. 3 goes into 57 19 times. So there's my ratio of perimeters. To find my ratio of areas, I have to square those. So 8 squared is 64. Okay, I don't, 19 squared is 361. So I, 64 is to 361. Okay, I'm given the area of the smaller trapezoid of 558. So I don't know the big trapezoid. So we cross multiply. So I'm going to get 64x is equal to 361 times 558. Calculator work. 361 times 558 divided by 64. 3147. So x equals 3147. Our answer is A. Okay, hey, that concludes these questions.